thing. It sounds like fantasy, but new research suggests trees could respond to their environment in ways we're only beginning to understand. Today, I'm dedicating a day to talking to trees, exploring the science, the wonder, and seeing if there's any truth to this idea. Can trees really hear us? Not in the way we do, no ears, no brain. But trees sense their environment in remarkable ways. They feel vibrations, respond to light, touch, and even chemical signals. So, is it such a leap to imagine they might react to sound? Today we'll explore this mystery together. The idea that trees can listen sounds like something from a children's storybook. If you told someone you talked to an elm tree, you'd get strange looks. The skepticism is understandable. Trees don't have ears, a brain, or a nervous system. We see plants as silent, passive, just the backdrop. But doubt drives us to ask, can trees detect and respond to sound? Maybe there's more to the story than we think. Trees don't have ears, but what if they can still listen, just differently? Instead of hearing, trees feel vibrations, like wind, water, or even a caterpillar chewing. Their entire structure is sensitive to these forces, making them natural receivers. Science shows plants can detect and react to vibrations, almost like a different kind of listening. The whole forest becomes a living sensor, attuned to the world's rhythm. Our human-centric view limits our imagination. We assume our senses define reality, but nature is far more creative. Sharks sense electricity, bats use echolocation, bees see ultraviolet. Trees communicate through chemical signals and vast root networks, an alien yet effective language. The forest may be a superorganism, thinking and feeling in ways we're only beginning to understand. Plants are dynamic beings constantly reacting to the world. You've seen a houseplant lean towards light, this is phototropism, a survival strategy. It ensures maximum energy for photosynthesis. Controlled by auxin, it causes the stem to bend. Plants detect light with photoreceptor cells. They use light cues to regulate their life cycle. This shows plants have sophisticated sensory mechanisms. Plants can feel touch, just like the mimosa pudica, which folds its leaves instantly when brushed. Many plants respond to touch, though often more slowly, adapting their shape to wind or contact. Even climbing vines sense and coil around supports. These reactions are triggered by electrical impulses, showing plants have a form of body awareness. The green world is alive with touch, feeling, and constant interaction. Plants live in a world rich with chemical communication, tasting danger in the air. When a caterpillar chews a leaf, the plant releases volatile compounds, a silent alarm other plants can smell. Neighbors ramp up defenses, making leaves bitter or toxic. Some signals even call in predatory wasps to attack pests. Underground roots and fungi share distress signals, connecting the forest in a web of communication. Plants are silent sentinels, seeing, feeling, and smelling their world. Plants respond to light, touch, and chemicals. But trees also communicate in a secret language, one without words or sound, yet rich and complex. Science reveals forests are communities, connected by hidden networks, chemical signals, electrical pulses, and underground fungi. This silent conversation shapes the forest, turning it into a vibrant, interconnected world, alive with messages we're only beginning to understand. Trees communicate through a language of scent, carried on the breeze. When damaged, they release chemical signals, what we smell in a pine forest or fresh-cut grass. These signals warn neighbors of threats, like caterpillars or disease, prompting them to defend themselves. Some scents even call in allies, like birds or wasps, to help protect the tree. It's a hidden conversation, keeping the forest alive and connected. Beneath the forest floor, a vast network of fungal threads, mycelium, connects tree roots forming the so-called wood-wide web. This underground system lets trees share resources and information, acting as a biological internet. Fungi trade water and nutrients for sugars from trees, extending the reach of roots and strengthening the whole forest. Through this network, trees send distress signals, nurture seedlings, and even recognize their kin. Research shows that mother trees act as hubs, supporting younger trees and redistributing resources. The Wood Wide Web reveals a hidden world of cooperation, transforming our view of forests from isolated individuals to a thriving, interconnected community. Trees don't just communicate with chemicals and fungi, they use electricity too. 
When a tree is touched or wounded, it sends electrical signals, action potentials, through its tissues, much like a plant-based nervous system. These signals coordinate rapid whole body responses, such as triggering defenses or shifting nutrient uptake. Even without a brain, this system allows trees to act as unified, responsive beings. The existence of these electrical pulses blurs the line between plant and animal intelligence. Together, chemical, fungal, and electrical networks reveal trees as sophisticated communicators, constantly processing and responding to their world. To truly understand, I ventured into an old growth forest, determined to talk to the trees myself. I chose a wise, ancient beach and settled at its base, sharing my thoughts and questions aloud. At first it felt awkward, but soon I was absorbed by the forest's sounds and light, my voice blending into the landscape. I listened deeply, not just with my ears, but with my whole body, seeking any subtle shift in the atmosphere. The act of speaking and listening in this way brought a profound sense of calm and connection. Whether or not the tree answered, I felt a new presence and peace simply by being attentive in its company. Moving to a cluster of young birches, I shifted from monologue to asking questions about sunlight, wind, and their hidden conversations. I sat quietly, jotting down observations and noticing my mind grow still, worries fading into focused awareness. Reading a poem aloud, I wondered if the trees sensed the vibrations as a breeze set their leaves shimmering in response. Was it coincidence or connection? The feeling of shared presence was real regardless. Communication, I realized, isn't just about exchanging words. It's about creating space for mutual attention and respect. Whether the trees were participants or silent witnesses, the experience deepened my sense of connection. Later, I sat with a solitary pine, sharing my struggles and noticing the vibrant life it supported, ants, spiders, and more. My focus shifted from seeking a response to simply being present, immersed in the sounds and sensations of the forest. The line between observer and participant blurred, I felt part of the ecosystem, not separate from it. The trees didn't answer in words, but their presence invited me to listen with my whole being. The true secret, I realized, isn't making trees listen to us. It's learning to listen to them and to the world around us. In their silence, trees teach us the art of deep listening and connection. As dusk settled, painting the sky in lavender and rose, I returned to the ancient beech tree. The forest grew quiet, evening sounds emerging. I sat in silence, senses alive, grateful for the stillness and beauty. Did the trees listen? In their own way, I believe they did. I left the woods feeling calmer, more connected, reminded that true listening is often found in silence. My experience talking to trees was profound, but what does science say? Researchers in plant bioacoustics have found that plants can detect vibrations, sound waves in their environment. For example, plants exposed to the sound of a caterpillar chewing will boost their chemical defenses, even if untouched. Other studies show certain sounds can help plants grow better. The world of plant sound is just beginning to unfold, opening new possibilities for understanding plant life. No discussion of tree communication is complete without mentioning the groundbreaking work of Dr. Suzanne Simard. A professor of forest ecology in Canada, her decades of research have completely revolutionized our understanding of forests. She was one of the first scientists to provide rigorous proof for the existence of the wood wide web, the intricate underground network of mycorrhizal fungi that connects the roots of different trees. Her work transformed our view of the forest from a collection of competing individuals into a complex, cooperative society. She revealed a hidden world of communication and resource sharing that operates on a massive scale right beneath our feet. Simard's most famous experiments involved using radioactive carbon isotopes to trace the flow of resources between trees. In one study, she covered a young fir seedling with a plastic bag and injected it with radioactive carbon dioxide gas. The seedling absorbed this carbon through photosynthesis. Using a Geiger counter, she was then able to track where that radioactive carbon went. She discovered, astoundingly, that it didn't stay in the fir tree. It traveled through the underground fungal network and into a neighboring paper birch tree. The trees were sharing food. This wasn't just a random leak, it was a dynamic two-way exchange of vital resources between different species. 
Her research also uncovered the importance of what she calls mother trees. These are the largest, oldest trees in the forest, acting as central hubs in the network. They are connected to hundreds of other trees, both large and small. Samard studies showed that these mother trees actively nurture the young saplings growing in their understory, sending them the carbon and nutrients they need to survive in the shade. Even more remarkably, she discovered that mother trees can recognize their own kin. They preferentially send more resources to their own offspring than to unrelated seedlings, a behavior that demonstrates a stunning level of sophistication and recognition. This work provides a powerful scientific foundation for the idea that trees are social beings. They don't just communicate, they collaborate, they nurture, and they support their communities. Simard's findings show that a forest's health and resilience depend on this interconnectedness. When we clear-cut forests, we aren't just removing individual trees. We are destroying an ancient and complex communication network, silencing a conversation that has been going on for millennia. Her work forces us to see the forest not as a resource to be exploited, but as a living, intelligent system that we must protect and respect. The discoveries in plant bioacoustics and the wood wide web are just the beginning. A new and sometimes controversial field is emerging called plant neurobiology. Now, this name is a bit provocative because plants, of course, do not have neurons or brains in the way animals do. However, proponents of this field argue that plants possess systems that are functionally analogous to a nervous system. They point to the complex signaling networks we've discussed, the electrical pulses, the hormonal communication, and the intricate transport systems as evidence of a decentralized form of intelligence that allows plants to process information and behave in complex, adaptive ways. Scientists in this field are investigating the plant's ability to learn and remember. In one fascinating experiment, researchers repeatedly dropped a mimosa pudica plant from a short height. The first few times, the plant folded its leaves in a classic defensive response. But after several repetitions, the plant learned that the drop was not a real threat and stopped folding its leaves. It wasn't just fatigued, when a different stimulus was introduced, the leaves would fold again. Amazingly, the plants remembered this lesson for over a month, even after conditions had changed. This suggests a form of memory and learning that we are only just beginning to understand. This research pushes the boundaries of what we consider possible for a living organism without a central brain. It challenges us to rethink our definitions of intelligence, memory, and even consciousness. If a plant can learn from experience and retain that information, what other cognitive abilities might it possess? Researchers are exploring how roots navigate complex underground mazes to find nutrients, seemingly remembering pathways that were successful before. They are studying how plants make decisions, such as when to flower or where to allocate resources, by integrating information from dozens of different environmental variables. The future of this science is incredibly exciting. As our technology improves, we will be able to monitor and interpret the subtle signals of the plant world with ever greater precision. We may one day be able to decode the electrical signals traveling through a tree or translate the complex chemical words they release into the air. This isn't about proving that trees are just like us. It's about appreciating them for what they are, highly sophisticated and aware beings with their own unique form of intelligence. The science confirms what my day in the forest made me feel, that we are surrounded by a world of profound complexity and communication, waiting to be discovered. My day among the trees began with a simple question, but ended with a profound shift in perspective. The trees, in their ancient stillness, taught me the power of quiet reception and deep attention. The forest speaks in a thousand languages, through scent, fungi, and the slow dance toward light. Science reveals their interconnectedness. No tree is an island, but part of a greater whole. The forest stands as a silent lesson in community, resilience, and mutual support. As we step out of the forest and back into our lives, remember, there's still so much we don't know about the natural world. The secret life of trees reminds us that magic and wonder are all around us. If we take the time to look, I hope this journey sparked your curiosity. Next time you pass a tree, pause, touch its bark, and just notice. Let's keep asking questions.